It's been about two years since the launch of the Raspberry Pi 400, a system that placed the Raspberry Pi's most powerful all-in-one computer into a custom keyboard, creating a device that seemed like a callback to the roots of vintage computers like the Commodore 64. But with the supply chains for all things Raspberry Pi currently trickled to a slow, it's not surprising that one of their competitors, Orange Pi, would push out a product to try and capture some of the success of the 400. To that end, meet the Orange Pi 800. And if imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, then the Pi 400 must feel very flattered. The 800 arrived in a cardboard box that, while only containing the machine, is clearly designed with the idea of including accessories with it, if that's the set you ordered. Side by side, these two machines are physically virtually identical. With the exception of the shape of the status LED holes, they look and feel like they could have come out of the same molds. Even the bottom of the unit spouts a very similar ventilation and overall design. The Orange Pi 800 sports the Rockchip RK3399 SoC, which has a 6-core processor where 2 cores are large cores clocked at 1.8 GHz, and 4 cores are small cores clocked at 1.4 GHz. This is coupled with 4 gigs of LP DDR4 memory and a feature not offered on the Raspberry Pi 400, 64 gigs of eMMC storage built right in. Around back, we have very similar I.O. between the Orange Pi 800 and the Raspberry Pi 400, with a few exceptions. They both have USB-C connections for power, two USB 3.0 ports, one USB 2.0 port, gigabyte Ethernet, and a microSD slot. Where things begin to differ is in their display options. The Pi 400 has dual micro-HDMI ports capable of 4K. The Orange Pi features a single, full-sized HDMI port with 4K support, as well as a VGA port. And while the 400 has the standard 40-pin GPIO that has served the Raspberry Pi line since the Pi 2, the Orange Pi features its own 26-pin header. And the Orange Pi also has an integrated speaker and headphone port. In terms of build quality, they feel very similar. Similar weight, similar strength of plastic, and even a similar typing experience on the keyboard. It feels like a pretty decent product. After booting it up, we find, unfortunately, that the included operating system doesn't feel nearly as polished as the experience with Raspberry Pi OS. The pre-installed software is pretty limited, and at first I thought there was no software installation suite. Only after poking around and ending up in the Orange Pi configuration menu did I find the Softy software install menu. Unfortunately, none of the software in the list would install successfully. Moving on to some web browsing, clicking the default browser icon gave me this error message. But launching Firefox on its own worked properly. I ended up fixing the default web browser issue by reinstalling Chromium from the command line. I also installed GIMP and LibreOffice from the command line as well, two programs that failed to install from the softy menu. And of course I installed the Thony IDE, so you could use the Pi 800 to do some MicroPython coding for your Raspberry Pi Pico if you so desired. As a basic web browsing terminal, the 800 worked decently enough, but it didn't feel particularly snappy. Video playback on YouTube worked okay up to 1080p during the test, but I wouldn't recommend pushing it much beyond that. Overall, I found the included OS to be a bit lacking. There are a few different ones available on the Orange Pi website, but for now, I wanted to review the unit as it arrived. So now the question is, how does the Orange Pi 800 perform? To answer this, I benchmarked it against the Pi 400, the Pi 4, the Orange Pi 0, and the Raspberry Pi 3 using Sysbench. Sysbench generates a synthetic load on the CPU, which will allow us to compare how quickly they can complete similar tasks. And the Orange Pi 800 trails behind the Pi 400 by about 32%, and behind the Pi 4 by 21%. It does, however, perform significantly better than the Orange Pi 02 and the Raspberry Pi 3. The story changes when we target just two threads so the Orange Pi doesn't have to use its slower cores. The difference in performance between the 400 and 800 drops well into the margin for error territory, and it puts the Raspberry Pi 4 in third place. Comparing the thermals only really makes sense between the 400 and 800 since they're designed with their cooling in mind. And it ends up being no contest between the two. The Pi 400 idled around 38 degrees and averaged 48 degrees under load, while the 800 was 8 degrees warmer at idle and nearly 20 degrees warmer under load. One place the 800 did consistently outperform the competition was in wireless transmission rates. Download rates were at least three times higher, and upload rates between the 800 and the 4 were pretty close to the maximum upload speed I'd expect to get with my ISP. 
The Pi 400 delivered the slowest results of the three boards, topping out at just about 30 megabytes a second for both upload and download rates. So where does this put us? Well, the Pi 400 has been running about $150 Canadian as of the time of recording this. The cheapest I could find the Orange Pi 800 was for about $135 plus shipping, which ends up putting them at a pretty similar price point. I've been a fan of the Orange Pi as a competitor in the past, but only where it makes sense, at least financially. With less support, slower performance for more than two threads, a GPIO that isn't pin compatible with Raspberry Pi accessories, and a less than stellar out of the box performance, I don't think the Raspberry Pi is in any danger of being dethroned. But if you can't get your hands on A400 and have a need for a computer in this form factor, and you're willing to do a little extra work, the 800 makes an okay alternative in a pinch. I hope you found this review helpful. If you did, please toss me a thumbs up. If you want me to try any additional software or benchmarks on it, let me know in the comments below. And thanks to my Patreon supporters on the screen right now who make it possible for me to continue to make this content. That's it for this one, but until next time, stay creative.